As I said at the top of the show, we have two great guests with us today, and I'm going to introduce them now. We have Representative Hugh Blackwell. Representative Blackwell is a Republican from Burke County, North Carolina. He is the chair of the Education Appropriations Committee, a member of the K-12 Education Committee. He's also vice chair of appropriations. So got a lot of hats, the right guy to be talking to today about budget. Next to a Representative Blackwell is Representative Greg Meyer. Representative Meyer represents, is a Democrat. He represents Durham and Orange County, and he serves on the K-12 Education Committee with Representative Blackwell. So thank you both for being here. Appreciate your time. First thing I'm going to ask you, Representative Blackwell, um, uh, since you're part of the Republican majority, about the overall budget process, sort of, um, and I should point out to our viewers, this is a very fluid process. We tape our show a little bit earlier in the week, so things could have changed and firmed up some by the time we right. air, but sort of where are we and sort of what are the next steps? Maybe it would be helpful for me to take just a minute and uh, explain how the process works in the sense that on the House Appropriations Committee, it's divided into committees yeah. that have responsibilities for certain areas of the budget. And I'm one of the co-chairs for education appropriation area. We develop a budget, we get it approved by our committee, but then it goes to the full committee, it gets approved. What's happened is the House has been through the process, the Senate's been through the process, there are differences that have to be resolved. So we go to conference with senators and House members meeting together. We start first with the chairs of the uh, Senate Education Appropriates Committee and the House, and we work out as much as we can. Then we as the expression goes in the legislature, we kick it up right. to what we call the full chairs or the big chairs who are, in the case of the House, there's seven House members and I think there are three senators. Those ten individuals then try to resolve things that are left. Then whatever they can't resolve, the, the lingo is it gets kicked up to the corner offices, okay. which is the office of the President Pro Tem of the Senate and the Speaker of the House to resolve the final issues. Right now, my understanding is that it's sort of in and out of the full chairs and the corner offices, that it's a little back and forth. Over the weekend, I expect that, uh, if, if not by Friday sometime, that uh, Senator Berger and the Speaker will come to some conclusions to resolve the final differences. The plan is to have the budget on the House floor Monday night and uh, for us to uh, to vote on, and of course the budget has to be voted on twice on two separate days, so uh, we'll come back on Tuesday and presumably vote the second time on the budget. You know, that's really helpful, and, and I think what I understand from uh, Senator Berger and Speaker Moore, I mean the goal is, is to get this passed and be done with the business by the 4th of July um, holiday, you, you, you know, the end of the fiscal year is, right. is June 30th. So that, right. you think that's still a, a realistic and I think, a goal? I think that is probably going to happen. That I think the budget is, my information is, it'll be done on Tuesday. Right. Uh, and that we will finish up session in full, we hope, before the 4th. Well, Greg, uh, Representative Meyer, I have to ask you, um, you know, being a, a member of the minority party, I mean, you've, uh, you've, you're, you're, you were involved, obviously, at their different points in the committee, but sort of what is it, uh, sort of from your perspective, uh, how this process plays out, um, you know, um, from, a, from a Democrat perspective? Well, Democrats don't have a lot of direct say-so in the process. As Representative Blackwell just described to you, all the negotiations that are happening right now are among committee chairs and, and leaders of the chambers who are all Republicans. Going back to the appropriations process, uh, what's proposed in the budget bill is mostly also developed by, by the committee chairs behind closed doors and then presented in committee. So Democrats mostly have the chance to respond. Uh, and this year, as opposed to some years in the past, there weren't even a lot of hearings leading up to the appropriations meetings. So a lot of what came out was, was written by people who you know, were doing their homework, but uh, doing it with their own ideas in mind and not process that engaged a lot of the minority party or had a lot of public discourse. Right. All right. Well, I want to jump in. We've got a lot of things to cover. We're going to be here for both segments, so I appreciate you both taking the time. I want to get into some of the specific issues within the budgets and things that we're hearing from school leaders and teachers and the, and the public. Honestly, one of the biggest issues we continue to hear about is the issue of K-3 class size. Um, this has been covered a lot. We've talked about on the show the issue of uh, lowering class sizes next year and the possible impact on specialty teachers. The Senate um, included some language about intent to fund. 
the House didn't include anything, but I guess my question for you, Representative Blackwell, is sort of what's the, um, what's the plan in the interim? Because if you pass a budget with no funding for these changes now, theoretically you're not coming back until May of 2018 when the schools are sort of already deep into their planning. Is there a plan to look at um, how to fund these teachers and these class size reductions? There's a lot of difference of opinion both among Democrats and Republicans and certainly among Republicans as well about how to approach it and their differences between education leaders in the Republican majority in the House and those in the Senate. Having said that, uh, I think that the plan is that there is a uh, task force that is going to be meeting probably fairly quickly after we adjourn. I forget the size of it, but I think it is intended to have maybe 11 members from the House and 11 from the Senate, but it may be nine each. But it's going to take a look at uh, the funding formulas that we use to provide money to the local school right. districts. But I mean, one of and that would include looking at this issue of how North Carolina has dealt with what is sometimes referred to as enhancement teachers, right. which is where the rub has come in. We have, the state has funded those positions not as a specific item. We've funded it basically the same way for probably 20 right. or 25, 30 years. When I was on the school board at home a long time ago, the state gave us no money for art and PE and music teachers. You made room within the overall teacher allocation. The Senate has insisted that class sizes be reduced, which is putting pressure on the funds being available to also hire these other teachers. So that'll be worked on, and I expect the committee will come up with a recommendation on that Okay. for the short session. I want to get your thoughts on it, but we're going to take a quick commercial break. But when we come back, I want to get your thoughts, Representative Meyer, on sort of what you, you, you stay in touch with the schools in, in Durham and Orange. I'll know what, they, what you're hearing. But um, as we go to break, they are going to stick around and continue the conversation. But see if you can answer this question on our bumper break. Uh, the American Counseling Association recommends a maximum of 250 students for every one child. For, for every one guidance counselor. In 2015-2016, what was the average number of students for each guidance counselor in North Carolina? <laughs> 